Welcome everyone. My name is Megan Franzen. I'm here at Patients Medical with our senior staff physician and medical director of the New York Stem Cell Treatment Center, Dr. Kamal Kokai. And we're here to speak with you today about stem cell therapy and the clinical trial that we have going on here at Patients Medical in the New York Stem Cell Treatment Center um, regarding stem cell therapy. And this is a really exciting topic for us, um, something that has been uh, an interest of Dr. Kakai's for many years. And he has quite a bit of expertise to share uh, with us today. But first, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about Patients Medical, who we are. We're a holistic medical center in Midtown Manhattan. We are full service, meaning we have a variety of different services available to each and every one of our patients. We have a multi-specialty staff, so for uh, people with many different health concerns, uh, you don't have to wonder about whether we have a doctor here who can take care of you. Uh, most likely, we're going to be able to provide you with the type of service that you're looking for. The motto is discover health, rediscover vitality. And we found that so many people, especially here in New York, are feeling miserable and tired and um, not very optimistic about their lives, but they don't even realize that until they start to work with one of our doctors who, even just after a, a visit or two, helps them really renew their life, either through a couple of nutritional tweaks or stem cell therapy, hormone balancing, many other different uh, techniques that we use here that can naturally and safely yet effectively completely revitalize somebody's life. And they don't realize until they start waking up feeling wonderful that they were feeling miserable before. Uh, so we definitely invite you in um, to experience this yourself or if you have a loved one who may, uh, you notice that they're feeling not so good lately, maybe a little bit down, not uh, feeling like they have a lot of energy, um, especially this time of year. It's, it's winter here in New York City right now. and. Um, kind of rainy and snowing outside, but uh, you know, when you feel like that, that's not normal. You should come in and have that addressed by one of our holistic medical doctors. And what they actually do is focus on the root cause of the symptoms. So some people say, oh, I don't like doctors because I just tell them what's going on and they hand me a prescription and they tell me to come back if it doesn't work. It's not really how our doctors operate here. They actually listen to you extensively about what you've tried, what you haven't tried, your nutrition, exercise, diet, lifestyle, um, and then they want to find out what the root cause of your symptom is, not only by their own analysis, by speaking to you, but also using cutting-edge diagnostics. They integrate modern medicines, such as stem cell therapy, which literally is cutting-edge, state-of-the-art medicine, with holistic practices and natural supplements. Their goal really is to promote healing and prevent disease, which is a novel idea in this day and age. Wouldn't it be nice just to skip the whole getting sick part? <laughs> what if you can head that off entirely and um, just be very proactive in your approach to your health? Well, that's what our doctors are here to help you with. Our physicians collaborate to approach each patient holistically, which means that if you're tired of running around from place to place, you go over here to see your endocrinologist, you go to another place to see internal medicine, you go to another place um, for your holistic medicine, and none of your doctor's protocols really agree with each other, uh, you might feel stuck. You might say, well, I don't know which doctor to listen to, I don't know if there's conflicting advice, or even possibly uh, con uh, conflicting uh, prescriptions. So that is eliminated here. Our doctors are all under one roof. Uh, your chart is all in one place. And our doctors literally are your wellness team. Our founder, Dr. Warren Levin, began practicing his groundbreaking holistic protocols in 1974. Um, and many of our holistic protocols predate that by many years. So this is not something that we all just thought up of yesterday and started implementing um, because we heard that holistic medicine was on the rise. These are things that have been in practice for many, many years, proven effective, not only by research, but also by the number of patients who have come in here and um, really started feeling better. We can treat many, many different conditions here. This is a short list of them. And Dr. Kakai is going to talk about many other conditions that uh, he has worked with through stem cell therapy. Um, but if you have a question about whether or not we can address your medical condition, um, just ask. You can contact us through email or through our website, patientsmedical.com. Um, and I'll tell you how to reach us at the end. 
Our staff includes medical doctors that are uh, internal medicine practitioners, family practice, gynecology, oncology and hematology, immunology, alternative pain management, pediatrics, nutrition, kinesiology, craniosacral therapy, Reiki and reflexology, oriental medicine and acupuncture, homeopathy, and many, many other techniques. So I believe that we are definitely the definition of integrative medicine here at Patients Medical. So now I'd love to introduce you to our speaker, Dr. Kamal Kakai. I'll tell you a little bit about his background. Um, he does family medicine, Chinese, and holistic medicine here at Patients Medical. He is the medical director of the New York Stem Cell Treatment Center here at Patients Medical, as well as our senior staff physician and an esteemed member of the team here. He received med his medical doctorate from Yale. He completed his residency with board certification in family medicine. He was certified in acupuncture, Chinese herbal medicine, applied kinesiology, and homeopathy, and has over 25 years experience in integrative medicine. So now about stem cell therapy, you know, we see a lot about it more and more in the news and um, probably since um, President Obama <laughs> um, became president uh, years, uh, several years ago, um, we've, we've noticed it more and more uh, being a choice that uh, celebrities, athletes, um, you know, people who are in our legislature, they have chosen as a, a way for them to heal either pain or from injury or something else. Um, so it's no wonder that so many people are curious about what stem cell therapy is and why we're having um, a stem cell therapy in the form of a clinical trial here at Patients Medical. Um, also good questions are, you know, how does it work? Um, you know, why is it still in a research phase? And if it's in a research phase, you know, how, how can we be using it to treat people? So Dr. Pakai is going to be answering all of these questions right now. So stay tuned. And I'm going to turn the microphone over to Dr. Kakai. Dr. Kakai, thank you so much for joining us today. And I know that stem cell therapy is really an area of passion for you. Well, I'm, I'm glad to be here and have an opportunity to share a little bit of what I know. Um, I think what's fascinating, uh, even as we speak, uh, the information is just growing and multiplying week to week because you have thousands of doctors and research facilities around the world that are inputting information and doing work. So I'm going to try to sort out some of the, the types of stem cell therapies and regenerative medicine um, that are actually available or in research phase and also share a little bit about what we do here as part of our study. Excellent. Thank you. Um, actually, the reason why there's so much curiosity and interest because you can have something like this particular case where a patient with alopecia um, can have um, one or two stem cell treatments and then within a few months be in a position where the hair is totally regrown. They've had to cut it several times and I mean, that's just the reality of, uh, of what has happened with stem cell therapy in any number of cases. And now just to be clear, um, you know, the person that we're looking at, the after, that's not a wig. That's that person's own hair. Exactly. Exactly. Truly amazing. So when we talk about a stem cell, um, most people, when they, they kind of frown up their faces when they hear about a stem cell. But if you remember, we start off basically um, that zygote, that, that primary cell that then breaks into other cell lines and these cell lines continue to multiply. So we have um, embryonic stem cells that come from that um, original pairing. And then we have adult stem cells, cells that have already differentiated into different tissues of the body. But what's unique about any of these cells is that they can actually just replicate themselves, right? Or they can differentiate into other cell lines. And they will, and of course, then are used by the body to address any number of problems or injury. Your stem cells go to that site to help with the repair and to help rebuild that tissue. 
right? And this isn't necessarily information that has just come to light. It's been around for years. Um, so, so why is it now, um, just now being used? Um, well, you're right. It has been around for a while, but um, the understanding of how to actually employ this natural ability that the body has, that really hasn't been taken advantage of, right? Um, and that's for any number of reasons, both philosophical, political, monetary. Um, and we'll get into some of that. Okay, great. Right. And again, this, uh, this um, slide just highlights what I've just said. It's the body's own internal repair system. And these cells are just capable of, of differentiating into um, cells and, and tissues that are needed throughout the body as it repairs itself. So you can imagine what happens as we get older or in disease where it would appear that our stem cells are less active or we have less ability to actually mobilize these the tissue that we need. Or we actually can't mobilize enough given the gravity of the injury that we have, let's say an acute event like a heart attack. Mm -hmm. And a question that I get a lot from people is, can, can one of these stem cells really turn into any number of these tissues? It can turn into bone, it can turn into skin, it can turn into muscle. Right. Well, you have different cell lines. Um, and what they find is that um, a lot of these cells have what they call um, plasticity that allows them. So, if, for instance, if you might have one cell line of mesenchymal um, cells that are mainly from from adipose, bone, um, muscle. But you find a stem cell within that cell line is capable of differentiating into to neural tissue as well. So um, not only that, they found that with the right chemical signal or trigger, that differentiation can also be, be aided. Amazing. So fascinating. So, um, yeah, the, the big thing is the idea of, of treating chronic conditions. I mean, once you hit 40, and for some of us it's even sooner than that, you realize you have a weak area in your body that just won't seem to get better after a good night's sleep. So, and the key is, well, how do you actually heal yourself? Um, you know, a lot of chronic problems, we end up taking a classes of medications, which if we were to stay on for a significant period of time, will cause any number of other ailments. So that clearly isn't the answer in figuring out how to get the body to regenerate and repair itself. And stem cell therapy will play a major role in that. And this brings us to the concept of um, regenerative cell functions. And if you look at it, this just highlights some of what happens, you know, in a cell or tissues and what we like to have happen. One, you know, when you have inflammation, um, inflammation is only supposed to be a step in repair of tissue. But when the body is stuck and stays in an inflammatory state, um, healing really can't take place. And it's chronic inflammation that is actually behind heart attacks and strokes and many other problems that the body has. So any regenerative therapy has to um, somehow take the body past the inflammatory stage. If we talk about immunomodulation, well, the immune system is going to be involved in any number of not just you know, protecting you from bacteria or viruses, but also um, dealing with inflammation, dealing with hormonal balance, um, dealing with just your response to the environment. Uh, so it's really important that there's a balance within the immune system. Many of us right now, because of the way we eat, environmental chemicals, we have our immune system constantly attacking its own tissue. Um, and that leads to autoimmune diseases. Some of us have it at a level that's subclinical, meaning we're not aware that we're actually suffering from the effect of that muffin 
that we had yesterday. And some of it is just outright life-threatening, like people that have um, lupus or other types of autoimmune diseases. So a regenerative therapy has to bring the immune system back into balance, right? Then there's trophic support. And there are a lot of growth factors that are secreted or produced by different cells in the body. And that needs to be maximized in a lot of cases where you have degeneration of tissue, right? Um, the tissue has lost its trophic ability in terms of cells secreting um, and creating the, the necessary chemical environment to allow tissue to grow to rebuild itself. Differentiation refers to um, the ability of, of cells, of stem cells in particular, to actually regenerate themselves and to differentiate into tissue. For instance, um, there are many um, organisms that are able to regenerate tissue. Even in our bodies, we can regenerate, you know, liver. Okay, but part of that regeneration means it has to be, the body has to be able to differentiate cell lines into the tissues that are needed. And again, this is something that stem cells, or what's, we'll, we'll learn about stromal vascular fraction, that has these growth factors and other factors, is really key in helping cells to differentiate so that you can replace or regrow some of that cartilage that you've lost in your knee. Homing has to do with the, um, the ability of the cells that are involved with regeneration and repair to get to the tissue that actually needs this. And this is something that the body is actually pretty good at doing and signaling when there's injury so that um, the, the cells that are needed for repair are attracted there. But sometimes that doesn't work as efficiently. Sometimes it's hampered by other drugs and medications that a person is taking. It's hampered by poor nutrition. It can be hampered by toxicity, environmental chemical toxicity, toxicity from food that actually um, it, it minimizes, it diminishes the body's ability to respond appropriately. Revascularization, of course, refers to blood flow. I mean, how many diseases have we seen that have really a result or the end result is decreased blood flow, whether it's to the heart, whether it's to the head, whether it's to, to genital organs, whether it's to um, the kidneys, to the ischemic limbs. Blood flow is really key if we're going to, you know, be here for a while. And then, of course, there's maximizing cell longevity and the efficient removal of processing of, of, of dead cells, a whole what we call apoptosis, and then cells like macrophages that are supposed to come and, and take these cells away. But a lot of times our cellular environment is so toxic from being acidic, from too much sugar, and other things that, you know, in part when people are talking about doing a detoxification, is really to address the fact that overall they feel like a garbage dump. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they realize they're toxic. And, you know, you know the, with that realization, it's like, hey, I better do something, including not eating that, that junk food, but then what can you do to detoxify the body? And again, um, you know, this will be an issue that will come up with patients that are looking for stem cells. Well, maybe you need to detoxify first so that the stem cells can spend more time on healing and repairing and just helping your body move waste, you know. And that's a whole other discussion. So you're talking about like kind of maximizing the effects yeah, of you want stem cell therapy, exactly. preparing your body. Exactly. Great. Um, so now the history of stem cell therapy. I know that um, you hear uh, when you read in the magazine and the newspaper articles, oh, such and so went to this other country to have their stem cell therapy. Um, so why is that, and how can we do it here now? Well, what happened, because of all the philosophical things that came up around embryonic stem cell. So, 
I mean, people have been using adult stem cell therapy in other countries for a good while, but it wasn't until the Obama administration came in that the possibility really existed just from a legal standpoint for doctors to actually begin to explore uh, the use of stem cells. So you're right. People were leaving the country, and this country, which, you know, in, in some ways prides itself on on its medical, I wouldn't say its medical care, but on its medical technology. Because from the standpoint of medical care, we're actually low down the list in terms of developed countries and actual health outcomes and benefits. But Except for our uh, patients' medical. <laughs> right, 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 but from the stamp, stamp, standpoint of stem cell therapy, I mean, these therapies have been available in other countries. So um, from a medical tourism standpoint, a lot of that work business has been going outside this country to places like the Dominican Republic and Panama and China in particular. And I think it's also important that you drew a distinction between embryonic stem cells and adult stem cells. Sure. What we're kind of talking about or focusing on today is adult stem cells, which really has nothing to do with embryonic stem right, cells. Right, and that that will be clear as we go through the webinar. Great. Right, so as I mentioned, the U.S. is getting caught up, but there's a curious thing that happens here in this country because everything somehow has to be monetized, and then there's a question of who controls that monetization, you know, who has say over that. So um, stem cell therapy is become controversial around that because in part it's really a clinical therapy that doctors can easily do within their offices but at the same time the the clinical impl implications in terms of people getting better and then what that means relative to the transfer of money with respect to pharmaceutical interests and what happens that has thrown a monkey wrench in it so now you have, um, you know, you'll have the FDA coming out with statements that, you know, in part, you know, taking these cells from the body and doing anything more than just manipulation if you were just to culture these stem cells and reintroduce that. Well, you're creating a drug and you run the risk of other problems. So um, there's been an effort to take stem cell therapy out of the hand of clinicians and put it back into a whole research mode, which then leads to the production of something that gets labeled a drug. And then as a drug, there are all kinds of other things that get attached to it and who can do it and who can't do it. So it's become a bit of a mess. So as I mentioned, um, you know, clinical trials are going on. There are all kind of animal studies that have been done. Um, we're going to talk more about the role that animals play in, in stem cells and stem cell production. Um, the big thing that we want to point out is the minimal liability associated with adipose stem cells. Well, Americans seem to have more than enough fat. So the harvesting of stem cells, what's more appropriately called stromal vascular fraction, is not a problem from the standpoint of just getting fat from areas of the body and then harvesting the stem cells from the um, from that fat and then um, administering it appropriately. So that's pretty, uh, I think that a lot of people are very interested in that, right? It's pretty provocative. People can get rid of a little bit of their fat and change it, exchange it for stem cells. So you actually draw the stem cells out of the fat. Right, it's actually from what's called the perivascular areas, and the blood vessels and things that are actually in the stem cells. And it's, you know, we're using a, a technology from Korea to do that. So it's called a closed system. We're not introducing anything into the system other than what we use to help digested fat so that we can get to the cells, but, and that's about it. Right. Pretty simple. Yeah, pretty straightforward. Uh, so are they safe? I mean, it, it sounds like you were just saying it's just your own cell. Yeah, it's just your own cell. So, you know, there's a statement back in 2006, and, 
basically in the New England Journal of Medicine is saying it's you know it's really not a, it's not a big risk you know it, it I mean the biggest risk is you know are you doing it under proper you know sterile condition because it, it's really a puncture wound to the client and you know we suck out some fat you know and really we're giving back your own cells right <laughs> not complicated nope not complicated at all so the FDA um, well, one, they talk about autogalous cells for homologous use. Can you autogalous, deconstruct that a little well, bit for us? <laughs> right. In autogalous English. means it's from self, mm -hmm. it's from your own body. Homologous use is referring to then using it for me, a lot of different reasons in, in the body. So we're not going to take your body. fat. Right. Mm -hmm. We're not going to take your own fat and then inject it back into your fat. Mm -hmm. Right. We're going to get the cells in inject them or give them by IV into other tissues in the body. So the FDA says that, you know, this has to be in the context of same setting surgery, um, meaning that the whole procedure might last three or four hours because literally we harvest the cells, prepare them, and we give it right back to you, you know, before you've gotten dressed or or anything. Yeah. That's pretty quick. So, yeah, no. so he's saying that you, you get the liposuction right. and uh, it's processed and then the stem cells are deployed right. back into your body all within about right. three hours. Right. And the idea of not promoting therapeutic results, and that has a lot to do with the fact that we're doing this as part of a, a nationwide clinical trial. So we don't want to give you the impression that the anecdotal reports that you've heard relative to any number of diseases, and those are necessarily going to be your results because we're not advertising this per se. We're letting you know that it's a clinical trial and that the problem that you have is under our area of investigation, right? And the reason why these are under areas of investigation is, for one, um, because the literature has supported with anecdotal reports that, yes, people are actually benefiting from this area. Two, based on our understanding of stem cell therapy, we feel that there's, uh, there's a chance that um, this therapy might be appropriate for your individual situation, you know, both from our own experience and from, you know, the anecdotal reports in the literature from around the world, basically. Right, because the American literature is actually behind, even though within that there's still thousands of articles and things that are coming out each week, and tons of animal studies and things that are really mind-boggling and fascinating, which we're going to get to. Mm -hmm. Great. So uh, just to highlight your point about it being research and not being able to promote a specific result, you know, part of that sounds like you don't want to tell people what they should be feeling because that might actually affect the research as well, right? Oh, you want to get it, an honest result from right, that. Right, it's that and, and just the ethics of it, you know, mm -hmm. um, because people, you know, they're going to do this, they're going to spend X amount of dollars, and then in their mind they might have, oh, I've been promised this result. and. We're not promising anything. We're laying out a clinical framework. We're providing information. We're allowing you to look at all the possibilities. And, you know, in the area then of regenerative medicine and autoimmune disease and things like that, when people look at what are their options, right, this might appear to be a, a very good option when they compare to other therapies and what's possible. But that's a decision that each individual has to come to. So, uh, the personal conversation right. between you and your doctor about exactly. whether or not this would be the right thing for right. you. Um, so let's hear a little bit more about um, exactly what it is and how it works. Right. Well, this is a group, when we were looking at stem cell therapy and just realizing that the FDA was taking a harder line with respect to stem cell therapy, um, we realized that Within medicine, there's still an area where doctors can conduct their own clinical research. Mm. And so you have what are called, you know, 
um, investigation review boards or, or IRBs, right? And IRBs, you know, the research is set up and there's a board that reviews it and, you know, to my understanding, the FDA has already looked at this particular IRB and given it a stamp. And so within that IRB, you come up with, well, what are we trying to do here? So one in the particular IRB that we use um, that is out of a, a group in California, um, Stem Cell Revolution, um, we're looking at um, both adverse effects related to the deployment of stromal vascular fraction, which is a technical name for what we're actually giving a client, it's not just a stem cell. Um, and the secondary objective, of course, is evaluation of the efficacy of the conditions treated. So those are the two key things in medicine, is do no harm and hopefully to have a beneficial effect. Mm -hmm. So that's exactly what we're looking at within the context of the IRB. So basically safety and efficacy right. of stem cells, i.e. SVF. Right. Um, and the other key here is that we're using a multidisciplinary team. So if I have questions about something related to orthopedic, I can speak in, to an orthopedic doctor within our practice network, our IRB network. We have colleges. We have any number of doctors that are specialists, you know, and so that the specialists in your particular area, whether it's you know, kidney failure or heart failure, they can weigh in on your condition relative to where you are, right, in the trajectory of that particular disease focus. And they can say, hey, I think this is something that is worthy of looking at, you know. So that's how we use it. And, and that's, it's fun for me as a physician because you get to work with other specialists and actually coordinate their effort as opposed to the patient just being shipped from one specialist to another. <laughs> you no know, fun. To be no. shuffled around. Exactly. Well, and that's pretty amazing, too. So uh, when you agree to participate in this study, you're not just getting the expertise of one doctor right. or a few doctors. This is the expertise of a whole nation full of doctors right. that are actually participating in this research. Right. Right. Um, so the way we have this slide, I would probably say it needs to be written. <laughs> what conditions is, uh, is stromal vascular therapy being used for? Uh, which is another way, I guess, of saying what conditions may benefit from this, right? So these are all things um, that there's been some suggestion, both in terms of anecdotal reports, the medical literature, both with animals and human subjects, where stem cell therapy has had some benefit, enough benefit that doctors like myself want to participate in this kind of clinical trial to actually see what we can, we can do for and there, you know, we'll look at some of the specific literature, but there are really some fascinating stories of these things. And this isn't just, you know, literature that's out there in the ethers. You can actually find this literature, most of it, on our website, patientsmedical.com. And um, under treatments, you can go to stem cell therapy. And we actually have a, a packet that you can download of the research. It's quite well organized. Uh, we're adding to it all of the time, and you can read this research for yourself. And that way, if you have one of these conditions, you're wondering what sort of research there is on your particular condition, just have a look uh, for yourself, and then you can come to the doctor a little bit better educated about you know, what, are, what have they found around stem cell therapy in your particular condition. Right. So what I want to do is go through some of the different ways that this technology is being used. And there are about, there are about four different ways, and I'm going to highlight some of the studies. Um, this first one is Dr. Doris Taylor. I think she's down in Texas right now. But what they were actually able to do with rats after they stripped the heart of the muscle and all that was left was just like the fibrin shell with the valves and everything they could actually drip stem cells on 
from a rat and actually regrow that heart. This is something, again, that's happening outside of the body. So, of course, now they're doing that for heart tissue. So, um, this is going to totally change the notion of a heart transplant. It's really going to be a heart replant. <laughs> right. With your own cells, yeah, heart with, made from your own cells. Right. Now, what's happening here is, um, so there's two interesting points here. One, the, the stem cells are actually derived from the heart itself, right? So um, this isn't from fat, this isn't from, from umbilical cord, it's from the heart itself. And then that, those stem cells are actually being cultured, right? They're being grown, so you have enough of them, right? And then that's actually being used to grow an organ outside of the body. <laughs> Fascinating. Uh, but just to be clear, this is not research that's being done here at the New York Stem Cell Treatment no, Center no, at no, Patients no, Medical. No, no. This is just kind of giving you a, a, a primer on what's possible with stem cells. Well, what's actually happening now? Mm -hmm. Now, this is actually being done. This is going to change the nature of, of medicine, the way it's practiced. I mean, heart transplants, kidney transplants, within a few years, those are going to be things of the past, right? Um, and it really, game, we're, talking, we're talking about a replant. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> that, that's what we're going to be talking about. I love the name for that. Right. Right. <laughs> So in the second one, Cedar Sinai Heart Institute, that's a famous, you know, heart center. This particular professor, now this is closer to what we're doing here because what we're talking about is being able to, uh, and they've done a number of studies with, with cardiac patients that have had a heart attack where you can actually reduce the scar. You can change the scar. So in other words, you don't necessarily need a new heart. You have some heart damage. Well, we can just regenerate and repair those cells by introducing stem cells, again, taken from the heart, right? And then actually, and you know, and what it's saying, that a pinch is taken from the heart by catheterization, expanded in a culture medium. So you have clusters of cells that are actually beating. <laughs> wow. Actually be in the outside of the body and then re-inject it into the heart. So what happens if you take that group and you compare them to other, you know, um, groups that don't have this therapy, I mean, 50% of the scarring is transformed. And this is just at the beginning in terms of understanding the dynamics of what's going to have to happen to get it to 100%. So as somebody that reads a whole lot of science fiction, and especially military science fiction with all the augmentation that takes place in the body and repairing of damage, this is the kind of stuff that will happen where someone will be able just to inject you with stem cells that will be tagged, that will track, go right to the areas of damage and repair the tissue. I, I, I'm telling no longer you, fiction. It, it's, it's science it's, now. <laughs> It's a science that the technology is there, so it, it will be happening. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, here's another variation on it. The pig, the organs of the pig are so similar to human organs. And it's funny how pigs get such a bad, you know, pork and everything, get such a bad play. People avoid it like cultures. a plague, but listen right. to this. <laughs> but actually, the organs of the pig are so similar to human organs, what they're doing is, um, they're making the human organs more compatible with the human immune system. So the poor pigs are going to be donor, donor organs. They're going to supply the donor organs for, for humans, right? So No longer uh, just for bacon. Right, exactly. <laughs> they're going to be growing just for their organs and where they can literally um, program the organs to be um, uh, immunologically compatible with your organs. So you're not going to be happy to ask your relatives for their kidneys. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you, you, you can go out to the farm and pick your pig. <laughs> but that's what it's coming down to. 
perhaps they'll have right. a more elevated place in our society it, now. Exactly, right. Um, here's something else where um, you have people that were actually blinded and literally from the edge of the patient's eye, and this is similar to the heart piece that we just talked about, but you have these adults themselves, right? They've been cultured, right? So meaning they're growing. That's not legal to do by the FDA, which is kind of mind-boggling when you look at the research that's going on. But so no, we are not culturing stem cells here, right? But um, in other countries, that is happening. And so what they did, imagine patients after a single transplant of these cells, 69% of patients regain their vision. We're talking about people that have been blind for years because of corneal damage regaining their vision. Uh, it, 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 it's just mind-boggling. There's nothing like this. There, there, there's nothing like this, and the technology is, is, is pretty simple. It's so simple that I feel like pharmaceutical companies are quaking in their boots. <laughs> but I'm going to show you how the pharmaceutical companies are, are getting in on this. Oh, please do <laughs> <Right>? tell. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, this was one of the, this was kind of an amazing story. Uh, this is a, a patient that literally had um, damage from, um, I think they had chemo, and their esophagus was just totally wiped out. So they actually took an artificial scaffold, not even of, of just a fiber, a plastic, right, and that was modeled after the esophagus, right. They took it, they put it in what's called a bioreactor, which um, is this kind of closed space that's kept at a certain temperature and everything, and they just um, dripped stem cells onto this um, this tissue, this plastic, to the point that the, the tissue regrew on it and they put it back in the human body. It's not rejected, right? It's it, fully functioning. It's fully functioning, right? And literally this happened in both, in, in, in Boston and London, they had to bring different parts of technology together to actually do this. But you can imagine that you know, um, the scientific minds are going to come together to reproduce this. It was a few years ago. Like I said, I have trouble keeping up on the information because there are new breakthroughs and everything that are being programmed. It's almost um, the whole, um, and again, I refer to what I would call science fiction where, you know, uh, people are programmed to live for several hundred years because the organs can be regenerated and repaired. That's where this is going. Interesting. Right. So even uh, there was one thing at the end um, that you had there um, where ovaries, ovarian tissue, right. Um, again, so women that are no longer um, fertile or have maybe premature ovarian failure, mm -hmm. take the stem cells from the ovary, culture them, re-inject. So now that's been done with animals. I've had a request for, um, in terms of people, you know, I think we have one case that will be coming up mm -hmm. where someone with premature ovarian failure, we're just going to use adipose stem cells, right? We're going to inject the, the stem cells um, actually through the uterus, so we'll go out to the fallopian tubes, and we're going to see, you know, exactly what can happen in terms of ovarian function. That's all we can really do. In you know, in this kind of setting, right? So you're doing the research. You're collecting yeah. the data right, right now on what the stem cells can right. do in this case. Right, right. Okay. So, um, what's interesting here with diabetes, and this is another way that stem cells are being used. I've seen articles with multiple sclerosis, type one diabetes where there's, the immune system is involved. We're talking about autoimmune type reactions that are leading to these things. So what they do is they chemically wipe out the immune system. Mm -hmm. And then they reintroduce the person's stem cells that are quote unquote naive, meaning they're not programmed to attack the body's tissues. 
So you're getting, um, you know, in both of these articles actually, you're actually getting people that have remained insulin free for as long as four years. Um, because, wow. right, they're having their, it's like having the immune system, well, this immune system is going bad. It's almost like it's a piece of software, mm -hmm. you know. So let's get rid of that, and now let's put in a new immune system. You know, it's still based on from the person's own stem cells, but let's just redo this. That's going to change somebody's <laughs> life. You know, imagine those children that are diagnosed type 1 diabetic when they're young. They have to struggle with that their whole life. Of course. This, is, this could be another option. Could be another option for sure. Right. Um, Oh, and this is one of my favorites because this one has to do with a tooth. <laughs> Regrowing teeth outside the body, same principle, and then reimplanting them wherever they're missing, and it just takes hold. Right? Look out, dental implants industry. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> you know, your own teeth, right? So we'll see how that comes along. Right. Um, so what are we actually doing, right? So let's say we've come in and we've decided that um, your particular condition um, is something that, that may benefit from this, that it makes sense to do, makes sense to study. Basically, we're doing a mini liposuction by one of the plastic surgeons on our staff. We're removing 50 to 60 cc's of fat. Right. Which is about a cup, not too right. much. Not too much. It's not like you're going to come in overweight and you're going to go out. No, it's basically, <laughs> for the most part, we, we do it right in the local, local anesthesia, right? Mm -hmm. um, the cells are, then we go through the whole process using our, our technology of, one, breaking down the fat, two, uh, then um, separating out the cells from the anesthesia, from the fat, so that we go through a whole process and we end up collecting maybe from 9 to 12 cc's of the stromal vascular fraction concentrate. Mm -hmm. And it's really from that that we can inject into an IV bag, we can, for someone maybe if they have COPD, you know, through a nebulizer, um, if you have a, a neurologic problem, we might infuse some intravenous mannitol to help dilate the blood-brain um, barrier of cells so that when we give it by IV for whatever condition you have, more cells can actually get up to the central nervous system. Um, we might inject locally if there are problem areas that a person has. Mm -hmm. so. And and then just to specify again, you know, there's been some talk of PRP out there, and we're not going to go into that. But this is not using PRP. No, PRP that... from platelets. Um, one of the reasons why it works or it's thought to work is because of all the growth factors. But and sometimes we'll use PRP will be used in conjunction with the stem cell therapy, particularly for osteoarthritis and things of that nature, right? but it's the growth factors in the platelets, right? But the growth factors are also in the stromal vascular fraction as well. Mm -hmm. But some folks just like to use them together, and that's within our capability Great. as well. Great. Good to know. Um, right, so stromal vascular fraction, again, is not just the stem cells, right? They're the growth factors, there's the fibroblastic tissue, there's connective tissue, muscle fibers, and endothelial cells. Um, that there are a number of cells. So it's, it's like you're, you're giving the cells within the environment in which they're thriving. So the stem cells aren't just being totally separated. It's like the difference between, you know, taking white sugar versus molasses. Mm -hmm. You know, the sugar and molasses is within a whole rich environment of sulfur and all these iron and all these other compounds. Same thing with the stem cells. We're not giving you white sugar. <laughs> We're giving you the whole cellular environment. That makes a lot of sense. And again, we rely a lot on homing in terms of the cells. So let's say you have osteoarthritis. So fine, we might inject some cells locally, but 
if you have an area of inflammation, the cells are going to migrate there based on the chemical factors that are released. And this is something that's particularly fascinating to me, just to actually see what these stem cells are doing, how they're right. actually just automatically going to the areas of inflammation. Right. Well, this just highlights what happens when there's an injury, right? And, you know, all of us can think about when we were kids, or unfortunately for some of us as an adult, you know, where you, you see where you have a wound or an injury, you skin your knee or whatever, and then you watch this whole process of the body trying to repair itself, right? Well, there are any number of chemicals that are involved, but what's really key is the release of these chemokines by the um, tissues that will attract the stem cells, right? And this is where your uh, the vascular um, piece is really important. If you're a diabetic and you have a, a foot injury and ulcer, well, it's not healing because the blood can't get there because of what's happened to, this, to the, um, the lining of the blood vessels, right? So this is where stem cells actually become important, you know, because in, in delivering the stem cells right to the site, it can help with, with the wound healing. And so, you know, just to be clear, so we, we all have these stem cells in our bodies, obviously, you know, fat is, right. uh, take not, has the stem cells in there. And, and when we're younger, we may not need a stem cell therapy, oh, but yeah. as we're older... As you're older, you get it. Like, you don't want to fall. Are the stem <laughs> cells older. just trapped in your body and they're not well, able to be mobile? Or you know, that, that, that's an interesting thought because the way I look at it, the, the ingredient that allopathic or Western medicine really leaves out when looking at the body as a cellular or biochemical reality is the concept of life force or life energy. As you get older, your life force and life energy goes down. And if your life energy is, is, is down, you're not going to do the repair. You don't have the vitality to actually do the restorative work. Right. Mm. That's why it's so important to keep your life energy up so that when stuff does happen, you know, you have a better chance of surviving. <laughs> Sounds good. That, right. that should be all of our goal. Right. And this is just the, some of the clinical evidence to show how stem cells that are labeled, they're, they're, they're tagged, will go to areas of inflammation. In this case, and you'll see on the next slide, um, that you know, the person um, that had arthritis in their right hand there, you see how the stem cells go, go right to that area. Um, this is another example of stem cells literally on a person that had a non-healing wound from laser treatment. Yes. The stem cells both um, by IV and then sprayed on, you know, actually made this kind of difference wow. in terms of the person healing. In so, just eight weeks. Right. And same with the next case, you know, where like just severe burns, how stem cells are really useful in helping the tissue regrow. Amazing. Right. Um, now, stem cells have really kind of worked their way back into medical therapy through the Obama administration, but in part through plastic surgery and dermatology in terms of aesthetics. So, you can see how, you know, a lot of times dermatologists will use stem cells and combine that with some fat, you know, and actually instead of just putting, you know, regular fillers and things in, you combine that with the fat and the stem cells, it helps to expand the tissue naturally. So I think we have a couple of slides here, right, somebody's face, and then of course um, this last slide, that's an acne as well acne scarring, but then breast augmentation as well in terms of the stem cells combined with a little fat and how that can help that way. And this, is, this has the possibility of being a whole new industry. It, it is in certain countries. <laughs> so we're just, we're just catching up. <laughs> right, right. And, you know, the plastic surgeons are really, you know, very interested in this work. Right. Um, this is just, I'm just going to highlight a few more articles, but uh, the whole concept of the adipose stem cells 
being able to revascularize tissue, whether we're talking about limbs that aren't getting enough blood, whether we're talking about, uh, you know, the heart. Well, what about that fifth limb <laughs> for men that a lot of times is because of hypertension, diabetes, atherosclerosis, men have erectile dysfunction. Huge right. concern for men. Huge men concern. Right there's some really good botanicals for that, but there's also, you know, stem cell therapy um, is actually shown, you know, clinically um, it's been useful. Um, again, incontinence, maybe after, you know, prostate uh, cancer surgery where the sphincter is weak. Um, unfortunately for a lot of men, that urinary incontinence can persist. Well, what if we can inject stem cells right there into the, to the sphincter? That would include, uh, improve bladder control. Um, Again, ST segment elevation is referring to EKG changes seen with um, a myocardial infarction heart attack, right? And we've already talked about how adult-derived stem cells infusion can, has showed a 50% reduction in um, myocardial scar formation. And, you know, so this kind of research is now has happened at a number of centers. Um, again, left ventricular function, when we start talking about congestive heart failure after a person's had a couple of heart attacks and they have trouble getting up the stairs and the swelling of the feet. So imagine um, actually restoring or repairing the heart function. This is not at the level of replanting the heart, but just restoring my myocardial function that's there. So left ventricular function can really be repaired. And look at the date on that. That's 2004. Wow. Right, so almost I, 10 years ago. Right, almost 10 years ago. This information has been out there. And Americans are just really now waking up to the fact that, well, they don't have to just be on drugs for the rest of their life. There are actually therapies available that can actually help to heal the tissue. Great. Um, it's just interesting. These are just comments from people that had different rheumatologic problems. And, you know, rheumatology, when we start looking at the effect of diseases like rheumatoid arthritis, polymyositis, myositis, where you have antibodies, stem cells and stromovascular fraction has the ability to neutralize um, this autoimmune response. And when we combine that with a couple of other um, European therapies that we use, um, you can see really excellent, excellent results. You can see these people, I got my life back. Right. <laughs> and again, these are all anecdotal reports, which is why, you know, we have a study to actually, you know, to look at this, you know, to look at this in more detail. Somebody having no pain. Um, yeah, that's, there's a lot of people out there dealing with pain right. that really, they would love to be able to say that. Sure, sure. Um, adult stem cell transplantation. Now, here's another way, and I'm trying to see if this is for this particular article. This is another way that drug companies are getting back into the picture. We mentioned about things being or, or toggleless, meaning it's your own body. Well, there are companies now that are cleaning cells. In other words, they're taking the stem cells, but they're cleaning the cells of things that would cause your immune system to react and reject them. So from animals? They're taking it from animals? And no, they're them? taking it from, from people. Oh, okay. Right, but they're cleaning the cells, right, so that now you can use it in another person. Mm, okay. And it, right, but the process of cleaning the cells and then culturing them, now you really have a drug. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So, and then these drugs would then be used for very specific, you know, kinds of problems and things. So people right. would be hired by a drug company to donate their tissue. That might be cells. one way that is actually, actually done. Mm -hmm. right. Interesting. Um, and, and this is a big area that we have, we'll have a lot of patients will come in for 
a lot of reports in the literature with respect to osteoarthritis and people getting relief. Uh, you know, again, not from the standpoint of trying to advertise or promote, but this is something that I think is really a big deal for I mean, you look at the amount of um, morbidity, amount of suffering from people that have arthritis as they move into the fifth and sixth and seventh decades. Um, if there was something that could be done to help um, heal, you know, the tissues or fractures that, that aren't healing properly. And, you know, we, we've done some of this work and, you know, we're interested in doing more. <laughs> we'll put it that so way. you're excited about I'm what excited you've been about seeing. Excited about results, excited about doing it. Yeah. Well, that's promising. <laughs> um, again, there's research. One of the early articles to really hit was um, Crohn's and fistula. These are inflammatory diseases involving the bowel. And a fistula is like an extra tunnel or burrow that can be made from your colon and all of a sudden you have a new hole somewhere on your buttocks <laughs> that's not connecting good. to your that, that colon. That does not sound good at all, Dr. <laughs> 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 I know. <laughs> yes, you have a new a-hole there, <laughs> right? I know. I know. But, so you can imagine that you can use something like stem cell therapy to help clear up those kind of problems um, and help with inflammatory gut disorders. Of course, within the integrated medical approach, there are a lot of other things that can be done, looking at hidden food allergies and looking at um, the use of, of probiotics and botanicals. So I wouldn't even recommend stem cell therapy until I exhausted, you know, all these other options, right? Um, you know, the arthritis, there, there, there's some areas of medicine where allopathic medicine has really fallen short and there are a lot of other things to do before you throw up your hand and say, you know, why don't you try stem cells, some other experimental therapy. And then, you know, the areas where it's already maxed out, you know, I mean, when you have a heart attack <laughs> and you have heart damage and, you know, fine, you can end up being on a water pill for the rest of your life or mm -hmm. taking whatever else to help boost your, your heart, your cardiac function, your coenzyme Q10, your berberine, whatever else. But if you can actually restore and regenerate the muscle, well, I think that's the way to go pretty quickly. <laughs> and time is of the essence at that point, too. You know? Right. And a lot of the studies show that, you know, you want to do these within the first six months. And, you know, again, some of that will change as um, the techniques are perfected and better understood. So the point being possibly just come in and, and consult with the doctor and yeah. they'll help you figure out yeah. right. what would be the best treatment right. protocol or if you would be a candidate sure. for research. Sure. Um, and let me see. Right. Okay, again, this is more more of the same, you know, Crohn's disease, looking again at, you know, inflammatory, chronic intestinal inflammatory diseases and and how we can use um, stem cells or mesenchymal MSC, mesenchymal stem cells. So this is kind of more of the same. Right. Um, Parkinson's, adult stem cells. Again, now here they actually, um, they took cell neural stem cells, were removed from the brain, right, and then using chemical means, they can coax them into going down a particular cell line, in this case, of producing dopamine, which is what's missing with Parkinson's patients, and then they're re-implanted, right? So this is something that has to happen at a very special facility, you know, but again, it's something that's going to be more and more involved. Um, another article on multiple sclerosis. And this highlights that approach where, again, you wipe out the immune system and then you reintroduce these naive stem cells to repopulate the person's immune system so they're no longer attacking the tissue. Um, 
some work done with, with ALS, which is Lou Gehrig's disease, um, which really is progressive, um, you know, disease leading to death. Well, actually, I think in this article, it slowed down the decline of, you know, of function of patients just using mesenchymal stem cell transplantation. So, again, more work has to be done in this area. But promising for ALS yeah, patients. Exactly. There's really nothing right. going on Very there promising. besides this, right? right? right. Um, right, deteriorating kidney function. And they took people that had deteriorating kidney function um, for different reasons. And they found that people suffering from lupus actually improved the best. You know, they improved the most. Uh, Again, looking at the way that stem cells actually help to curtail that autoimmune process. Um, this was um, it's a good study. Um, again, the type 1 diabetes, we've we talked about that in terms of wiping out the immune system, high dose immunosuppression, and then giving um, the, the stem cells and what happens with that. Um, these are just, again, this is, we actually had an ophthalmologist who just joined our staff. Um, again, these are women that actually had stem cells placed right at, in the retinal tissue, right? And again, to, to get stimulate the regeneration of the retina. So you can imagine how that would be possible. The other study I cited, the, the issue was, was the cornea. Right, and the cornea needed to be regenerated, and, and it was. There's no reason to think that can't happen for retinal diseases. So in part, this is now the thinking of, of doctors like myself. Well, gosh, if it works for one tissue, it should work for these other tissues because it's all part of the same process, and this is not rocket science. <laughs> right. And the research. Right. Um, Again, this is another article on, on, on kidney disease, um, impaired kidney function, and some of what can happen. In fact, it looks like we, this is actually the same article that we, we just showed, I believe. Sorry yeah. about that. Yeah. So, yeah, who do we do stem cells again? Where there's um, examples in the medical literature, cases where adipose stem cells have helped, you know, in anecdotal reports. Other colleagues in our national group report success or interest in a particular area because they feel it should work. Um, also, the specialists that are affiliated with our practice, they weigh, weigh in on that and they feel like this is really a viable, you know, viable treatment option. And I mean, I've been doing this a year and a half now, so I get to weigh in just based on my clinical experience and seeing what's possible. Great, great. And do you want to say anything about any personal experience that uh, you've had with this? Um, it's, well, my personal experience all relate to working with clients. And I mean, I'm in this work because I've seen how useful it's been for, for many clients. And I don't want to see this turned into a drug that, uh, you know, this is something that should be between a physician and, and the patient, you know, there's enough literature. Um, I think the IRB, the results are going to show that it's safe. It's going to help delineate which patients or what types of problems need a more involved stem cell program and which types of um, problems can actually respond to this kind of therapy. So I'm excited just to have the opportunity to work with this. Great. We're excited that you're here. <laughs> yeah. um, so, you know, obviously this is a, a webinar and um, uh, you, you probably have questions. Um, Dr. Gakai, is there anybody who should not do stem cell therapy? Well, it's interesting because I was speaking to our holistic oncologist, Dr. Bettina. He's actually interested in using stem cells for certain types of cancer. I mean, that's far removed from me, so um, again, this is where it's good to have an expert. But, you know, if you have breast cancer, we're not 
going to be sticking stem cells in your breast for breast augmentation, <laughs> right? Um, so there are different ways to look at that in terms of the types of problems. And um, so basically, I'm just avoiding patients that have just had cancer, you know, unless the oncologist says, well, I think given the type of cancer and what's going on here, this would be the most appropriate thing to do. And to be frank, that's really just my, my biggest exclusion. Mm -hmm. That and then figuring out, is this going to be worth your time, effort, and finances? Finances, and we'll address that in just a little bit. Um, also, Dr. Kapai, what about children? Now, we were just speaking briefly before about diabetes type 1 and, you know, how um, this has the possibility to maybe make a difference in uh, well, right now, life. It's just in the context of our IRB, we're really just working with adults. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I would certainly try to, you know, assist in finding a, a place that would be appropriate. You know, if someone has a child and they want to take advantage of this therapy. Great. Good, to, good information to know. Um, so if you're interested, and I'm guessing if you've made it this far in the webinar, <laughs> because <laughs> you are interested, in this, either personally or maybe even professionally. If you're a doctor listening to this and thinking, wow, you know, I really want to know more um, about incorporating or, gosh, I have some uh, patients I would really love to refer. Um, patients, if you're thinking, um, wow, I wonder if this is a possibility for me. I would love to have a conversation uh, with Dr. Takai or a member of his team about this and find out what are the possibilities for me um, in, in this research. Um, there, there are many uh, ways that you can contact us, but um, you can also apply directly online. And our website is right here, patientsmedical.com slash stem-cell-therapy slash registration-form. I know that's a mouthful. But suffice it to say, if you go to our website, patientsmedical.com, and click on treatments, you'll be able to uh, very easily navigate to our stem cell therapy website, which does have a lot of our uh, information on it, just about who we are, what we do, um, how uh, adipose derived stem cell therapy works, um, as well as a ton of the research on there, the packet you can download of the research, and then the registration form where you can actually apply for it. Um, so uh, I'm going to say thank you very much to Dr. Kukai for joining us and then also just give you a little bit more information about the fees. Um, so this actually is a patient-funded uh, research, a patient-funded clinical trial, which means that there is a fee to participate. And we like to be very open about this with the patients because um, you know, many times when you hear about a clinical trial, you think, oh, um, this is either free or they're going to pay me to participate in that. No, we are not funding patients <laughs> for the clinical trial. Uh, we, we don't have any funding. We're not underwritten, um, or this IRB is not underwritten by a major drug company or a big university. Um, this is, in essence, a doctor is doing the research purely to move this science forward. Um, and, and while it seems very altruistic, this is actually what's happening. As you can tell, Dr. Kakai has a lot of passion for this personally as well as professionally. So um, he and uh, doctors similar to him throughout the nation are working together under this Institutional Review Board um, to collect this data um, and kind of move the science forward. Now, what do you get out of it <laughs> as a patient? You get stem cell therapy. Um, which, as Dr. Kukai has uh, shown through the various research and explained, he's really excited about where this is going. Um, so uh, this may be something that, um, well, may be worth the money for you, especially if time is of the essence or you tried everything else, um, or if you're just curious and, and you would like to allocate uh, the, your funds to that. So the cost of the therapy ranges between $10,000 and $15,000, and that depends on the complexity of your case, um, the number of specialists that would need to be involved in both evaluation and in the procedure, and then a number of other factors. Um, uh, so again, between $10,000 and $15,000 is actually the cost of participating in the stem cell clinical trial here at the New York Stem Cell Treatment Center at Patients Medical in New York City. Um, 
so what I would love to do is just kind of to quickly introduce you um, to Dr. Hakai, who we just heard speaking earlier, um, right here. He's our Cell Technologies Director, Dr. Stuart Wegg, um, who does the anesthesia um, for the, the study here. Dr. Victor Rosenberg and Dr. Paul Dreschnik, um, they are our plastic surgeons. And then we also have many other specialists who come in for various procedures um, so just like Dr. Kukai was saying, um, we have ophthalmology, we have oncology, we have gynecology, um, uh, endocrinology, many, many uh, specialists who come in and will work with the team um, to benefit the particular patient and really kind of um, uh, customize the experience uh, particular to the, the individual patient. Um, so uh, if you're wondering about insurance, um, unfortunately, insurance is not yet at a place where they're actually going to cover stem cell therapy. However, when you come in, the first step is seeing the holistic medical doctor to get the evaluation. So you would be seeing Dr. Kakai, the cell technologies uh, director himself, and he would do an exploratory interview, a holistic health history, a physical exam. He would review your blood work. Um, you probably had done already if you have a medical condition that's been diagnosed someplace else or if you've been in the hospital, he's going to look at those records uh, and reports. And then um, he's going to help you start to prepare your body for the stem cell therapy if he feels like stem cell therapy is the best course of action for you here, if it, um, it, you would you know, be eligible for the research. So what does that mean to be prepared for stem cell therapy? Well, just a really thorough evaluation of your health. Now that evaluation of your health, that office visit with our medical doctor could be submitted to your insurance if you have out-of-network coverage on your medical insurance. So our doctors are out-of-network medical doctors, and what we would do is after you pay for the office visit, um, for the evaluation, and by the way, that evaluation fee would be deducted from the complete fee for stem cell therapy if you choose to participate in that. But that uh, evaluation, um, after you pay for the evaluation, we would give you um, an insurance claim form and an itemized receipt um, with the diagnostic and the treatment codes on that. And then you could send that to your insurance, and your insurance would be reimbursing you, again, if you do have out-of-network coverage on your medical insurance and if you've already met your out-of-network deductible. And it would be according to your insurance's out-of-network reimbursement. Uh, fee schedule. So um, do contact your medical insurance if you're not sure whether or not you have out-of-network coverage on your medical insurance, and they could tell you a little bit more about that. But just the first step is to come in and be evaluated. And then when the body is being prepared for stem cell therapy, that may mean um, getting rid of, of you know, any little minor infections that you're not actually hoping to treat with a stem cell therapy. Um, so let's say if you have osteoarthritis in your knees, you'll, you're going to want to clear up a sinus infection or an ear infection um, or something like that um, so that the stem cells could be as effective as possible. You'll kind of get what I say most bang for your buck out of the stem cells. And you know, regarding the fee of the stem cells, it is ten to $15,000. So um, you want to really optimize your body to prepare yourself to get the maximum out of those stem cells and that procedure. As Dr. Pakai said, um, the procedure is only a three, uh, three to three and a half hours in length, and it's done here at Patients Medical on our premises with our doctors and our specialists. And um, it's a very comfortable environment. It's an outpatient environment. It does not require an overnight stay. Um, you're not going to be fully sedated, so you will be able to um, leave here. Uh, we recommend that you just bring somebody along just to make you feel safe on the way out, but you will be able to walk out of here unassisted if you came in walking um, unassisted. Um, so that um, covers the fees and insurance policies. I'm sure you have many, many questions about the fees and the insurance policies, so you can please just direct those to us um, here at Patients Medical. Um, and I'm going to, uh, you can go to the website, patientsmedical.com, and go to our information on stem cell therapy and apply to get more information. Um, or you can give us a call at 212-661-4441.
Um, I'm going to show you a little bit of the website. So this is the information on our website about stem cell therapy. As you can see, there's um, many different uh, areas where you can read up on it. Um, so how, what are they, how are they used, the pros and cons, um, you know, other research, how a clinical study runs and uh, why we're using it that way, um, what the FDA's role is in that. Um, how pure the stem cells are that are coming out of your own body. So go ahead and read that information, fantastic information. And then when you have questions, which I'm sure that you will, please give us a call, 212-661-4441. So before you leave this webinar, please just take down this phone number, 212-661-4441, or the email, if you prefer to email, media at patientsmedical.com, that's M-E-D-I-A, at P-A-T-I-E-N-T-S, medical, that's M-E-D-I-C-A-L.com, and that'll come to me or a member of my team. Again, my name is Megan. I'm here at Patients Medical in New York City. We're on 2nd Avenue and 42nd Street um, in the heart of the Big Apple here. Um, so I just want to say thank you very much for joining me, and I look forward to hearing from you with your questions and possibly to apply to uh, be a part of our stem cell research here at Patients Medical. Thank you very, very much for joining us and we look forward to hearing from you soon.